Well, hello, everybody. We're warming up the old piece of shit. I have mustered up enough ambition to take on a few things today. Um, they're saying to use regular GM transmission fluid in it. And I double and triple checked that this is just fine for the transmission. Um, they're saying use AC Delco. But I've already bought that stuff. And I've already ran through all the numbers, and that stuff is just fine. So, um, going back to yesterday's vis video, Vizio, that's my TV, video, I found some proof what I was talking about. Even though the service manager down there at Lead Chevrolet in Weisboro doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. Um, so I found some stuff on the internet, some papers I printed out. And it says uh, both Gen 1, 2014 and 15, and Gen 2, which is 2016 and up, so I've got a Gen 1, um, have a variant of the JCO, JETCO JF015E. Okay, originally the 2014 Sparks came with a transmission software that always shifted to low. Wait a minute shifted to low or shifting to low oh wait a minute but the guy said it doesn't shift because it's a belt drive there's no shifting the car doesn't shift oh okay dickhead so shifting to low gear oh it's got a low gear okay but you told me that this belt drive doesn't have any gears in it and liar I know I worked at Amco transmissions I know about transmissions I'm not a freaking idiot so it was always shifting to low gear causing shocks resulting in premature belt and pulley metal wear an update was issued when they fucked my car up for the CVT film wear to prefer staying in high gear on deceleration and that update was the the P1 one or PL 1309 um, the 2015 plus sparks come with this update already pre-installed this is now a normal behavior that can't be changed um, CVTs and all 14 plus sparks models are not sealed they are serviceable uh, oh they're serviceable so they don't fix them anymore. They just pull one out and throw it in garbage and put in a whole new one. They don't service them. Okay. Um, and you should perform maintenance at least every 45,000 miles unless you drive on the highway all the time. So right there, I just proved it does shift to low gear. So now they have eliminated that shifting to low gear. So now you take off in freaking second gear. And now you don't have any freaking power to get your ass out of the way. Um, let's see. CVT performance is heavily influenced by the state of the fluid inside. Deterioration fluid will cause a belt to slip, producing a shutter. Which I got on my first one at 45,000 miles. Just when they tell you, you should change at least every 45,000 miles... Is when my transmission went out. Nice, huh? Yeah. It's pretty nice. Um, no, this shutter will not disappear on its own. It'll only get worse, which I know. A uh, shutter is different from a slow, smooth acceleration. I know, blah, 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 blah. Fluid is not the only thing go wrong. I mean, you know, whatever. So, um, now here we go. Okay. The CVT-7, which is the Jayco, has an auxiliary two-speed gearbox attached to the output shaft, which allows switching between low, high, and reverse gears. Oh my God, but there's no gearbox. It's all a bell drive, they told me. Yeah, F you, lead car. Low gear is used to increase torque at slow speeds. Yeah. 
so you can get the F out of the way before you get T-bones taken off from a stoplight or stop sign or get your ass going out in freaking traffic. Well, high gear is used at 27, so it kicks in at about 27. Transmission belt always rotates in the same direction. Well, yeah, I would figure that out. Once the car accelerates to 18, 18, 8 to 18 miles an hour, another optimization kicks in that locks up the torque converter and connects the engine to the transmission without going through the fluid company coupling. It's like a standard. Once you let go of the clutch, you're direct connected. It's a lockup converter. I know all about those. Um, on deceleration, it unlocks. It uncouples and goes back down to regular mode. Um, TSB describing the CVT behavior to the dealers says those changes can be perceived as shifts. It can be perceived as shifts, but it says it shifts. You know, they use the word which allows switching between low and high reverse gear. So there's a gear in there, so you're changing gears. So it is shifting. You know, the way they try to word shit to cover their asses. Um, okay, now replace the fancy gears with, okay, now they're converting, they're, con they're comparing a bicycle. In this one page, I didn't print out the top half, but they're basically comparing a bicycle. You know, you take off in first gear, zoom, away you go. Take off in fifth gear, you're straining like a bastard to get going, okay? Now replace those fancy gears with pulley and put a steel, flexible steel belt between them instead of a chain. Add 850 plus pounds oil pump to supply hydraulic pressure for these for switching the ratios and engaging the gears oh there it is there's the gear word again fill it with about three quarts of oil the transmission's got three quarts of oil in it do you know how long it takes to, that shit to get hot like that yeah um and carry the pressure lubricated all the horse shit so you know and then you add another two-speed gearbox with the reverse gear and you'll have the Jayco, you know, CVT. So it tells you right there, two-speed gearbox and reverse. And they're telling me the car doesn't shift. Okay, what the hell is a freaking two-speed gearbox with a reverse? I, it, you know what I mean? What the frick? So it does shift. It does shift with a two-speed two -speed gearbox. It shifts from first in the high range, then into lockup. So, Chevy, go fuck yourself. So, yeah. So, anyways, they're trying to say, the manager down there is trying to tell me, and I sent this to Chevy, too. I sent the link to this and said, why don't you learn the shit you're selling and read about what you're selling before you open your goddamn mouth and uh, listen to people, a service manager, which, which probably used to work at Toys R Us, is now a service manual or man manager at a goddamn garage. And he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know? Come on. So, today, I'll kick the heater back on in a minute because it's nippy out here. Nice, lost 50. I want to replace my axle seal. I'll do that. I basically just got to pull the tire off, the ball joint on the bottom off, and just swing it out and just pop the shaft out with a pry bar. Take the seal out, carefully tap in the new seal. Very carefully slide the axle back in so you don't F this up here. You know, you got to lubricate and just slide it in there. Once it gets in, then you can come back outside and just, you know, push on the brake drum like this and you hear it snap right in but you have to make sure everything's lined up first so i mean i've done transmissions on the ground i've done them on the lift for years trainees ain't shit to me so yeah, i did a front wheel drive transmission on the ground in the winter under my dad's lean to at his house so and that was a uh, mercury topaz that's what that was so i got my car's been here idling 
and I want it to get warmed up because I want the training fluid to get warmed up. And uh, okay, I've already got heat in the car. Where's my goddamn HUD release? So, a little ticky motor in this thing. So some of these cars came out with a one liter, and some of them came out with a what's this one? 1 1.2. Yeah. But there's supposedly a dipstick down here. It showed it in the picture, and it's a bitch to get at. But it only hold, holds two quarts. I'll have to look at the picture again. I see the shifter. But it's supposed to be down there in that corner somewhere. Either there's a dipstick or there's... Now my light's caught. Um... There's either a dipstick down there. Oh, wait. Is that it? I think I've seen it. Yep, there it is. There it is. There it is. Can you see that way down there? Let me zoom way down in on you. That's your dipstick right there. That black round thing is a dipstick for the transmission. Crazy, huh? Okay, let's see if I can reach to this little hole. And get down in there and get that. Okay, how's this work now? I gotta twist my ass around. Oh, here, okay, here it comes. Here it comes. I got it. I got it. Okay, look at the color of this. What's the color of it? I'm smelling it. Is there even anything on it? I don't know if there's even anything on it. Hang on, i got to set this down and check this again. Okay, so my transmission fluid is way down, almost on empty. It is clear, but it's way down. You can see it. Let me zoom in, turn the light on so you can get a good view. There it is. See where it is? Way down on the end. It should be between those two chunks right there. And it's way down on the tip. So, although it is clear, which is nice, it's clear transmission fluid. Wait a minute, why is it clear? It's supposed to be clear. It's supposed to be red, ain't it? See, these new cars, they change the colors on everything. Let's see what the hell color this is. Left hand open. What is this stuff? Let me get my some on my finger. Oh, okay. So it is clear. All right. Okay, so it is a clear fluid. Wow, boy, can that really throw you off. You don't even know if you got a freaking training fluid because it's not red, a training leak. Because it's clear. You won't know what the hell it is. It's like, what's this clear shit? Oh, it's just water dripping out of the, you know, the air conditioner. So, I'm low to begin with. So, that's nice. So, the axle seal leak's been uh, dripping out my training fluid considering they only hold... 3.2 quarts. What a bunch of shit. Okay, so one good sign is um, I gotta check my mileage because this training was put in at 40. I'm gonna shut my headlights off. I don't leave damn things on. Okay, 45,000. And I've got 53,000. Damn it. Okay, we'll shut this off and I always take the key out just in case. So, 45, 50, there's 8,000 miles I've got on the tranny fluid and it's clean and I'm changing it because I am. So, because I'm an idiot, I'm going to take this funnel and I'm going to clean it and then I'm going to stick it all the way down in that tube. Which is way the freaking hell. I might even need an extension to get down in there. I don't even know if I could reach it. Oh, there it is. I don't even know if I could reach it. But So, if you have a spark and you want to check your training fluid, this is what you're looking for. This little black thing that looks like this. And there is your dipstick. And right here is not the freaking dipstick. Because I was right and Chevy's wrong. And Chevy can suck my left nut. So, yep. Yeah.
So, I'm changing my, geez, do you think I need to change it? Maybe I'll wait. Maybe I'll wait because it is really clean. The transmission fluid is really clean. So, you know something? I'm not going to change it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put this training fluid to the side. And I will buy the original AC Delco transmission fluid. And I'll put it in there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy the, the real, because if I put anything other in this car than what it calls for, they could get me on some type of, uh, well, you put the wrong shit in there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shelf that for now, and then I'm going to buy the regular AC Delco fluid. See, there's a tab there, and this, this, there's a metal tab that slides up inside this. I don't know if you can see it down there. I'm turning on my magic light, but... So there's your dipstick, and then there's that metal tab. Where are we? Right there. It doesn't look like much, but... And that... That slides up inside this. All right, so... I'm going to hold off on a training fluid. Maybe I'll do it at 15,000. But I'm going to have to top it off. It is low. Well, that's right. It is low. So I'll leave this, this out for now. And then I will, I'm going to leave the stupid funnel in there. I'm just going to shove the funnel any place in here because I forget shit. And if I close the hood down, it won't close. And I'll be like, why is the hood open? And then I said, oh, because you dumbass got to have to add fluid after you fix your axle leak. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to raise this up and I'm going to change that axle seal. And back my camera out because I'm an idiot with doing that. And uh, I'll get this taken apart and I'll come back to try to keep this video semi short. Okay, so I used my trusty airbag, got the car up in the air, took the tire off, looked at my rotor, and I go, Holy shit, is my rotor cracked? No, it's not cracked. It looks cracked, but once you rub on it, it goes away. So, oh, it might be a crack. I don't know, but as you can see, I use anti seize on everything. So, now what I have to do is I have to come on under here. There's a leaky bastard right there. And this one's dry, as you can see. It's nice and dry. So, here's Mr. Leaky. So, I got to pull that 15 millimeter bolt out. I think it's 15. And I clip the light back here. There's a nice light clip spot there. Undo this bolt, swing this down, and then I'll be able to swing this out, which will give me the room to pop this out and put the new seal in. It's that easy. I'll be back. All right, so we're having a real bitch of a time getting this ball joint out on the bottom. Um, I got it moving a little bit. I had to use this. So I got that in there, and I got it pulled down a little bit. There's really no pressure on this, if you think about it. Unlike some cars, there's pressure on this holding it up. Well, with struts, there's no pressure on it. The struts is maxed out, and that's where it is. So now what I'm having to do is like put a chisel in the bottom of this to give me more, more pull. So that's where I'm at right now. So we popped it out. And now if I swing out my steering arm, like this, this should come right out with it. There we go. Whoa. Okay. Looks like I'm going to be changing some fluid after all. Good thing I got a pan. She's peeing. Well, it's not as clear as I thought it was. All right. Let's see, there's my seal. Well, the seal's like a reverse seal. The rubber's facing outward. That's unusual. So the seal goes inside this way. Huh. It's a reverse mount. All right, I'm gonna finish pulling the rest of the axle out the rest of the way, and then we'll go from there. I dented my back and plate. I hope that isn't gonna rub against the brakes right there, but I can fix that in a minute. Good thing for that pan. 
All right, now, if you've never seen this type of seal, this is what you got. It goes rubber side out. So when you put these in, you be careful. I would probably try to find like a socket that barely fits around the edge of this or something. I've got a I've got a seal replacer, but I don't have one that's gonna fit this. So I'll have to come up with something. I'll probably grab my uh, three-quarter by FAE. One of my big sockets up there, a 12 pointer, just so it kind of snugs around this. But, well, it looks like I'm changing my training fluid after all. Because there's probably a quart of it in there. Look how black it is already. Yeah, well, Jesus Christ, you know, I might as well. I basically just emptied out the training, so screw it. I might as well just change it. Well, Houston. As my luck would go, we have a problem. This is the one I just took out. I popped it out. And this is the new one that's supposed to go in. Let's see what's going on with this picture here. Let's see. Mine measures 2.04. This one measures 2.12. How can it be bigger? You can actually see it's bigger with the spaces in here. And this is a regular GM part for the Chevy Spark. But it's too big. And I got this shit all torn apart. And I had to order this gasket. Jesus Christ. See, this is my luck. This is, this is how my luck goes. I got to see if I can find the gasket now. It's Saturday. Guess what? Probably nobody's got it. All right. We'll see what happens. It's not going to be good. Well, it looks like this piece of shit's going to be sitting here for the weekend. Just like that. Um, you know what I forgot? They changed the goddamn transmission. You know what that means? They put in a newer transmission. That explains why the difference between the sizes. Because this is a 14, and this is a... I don't freaking know what this is. I'm looking on the internet for size and measuring shit. So, I don't know what your transmission this is in my car. Which means, I don't know what freaking seal. But I know they put the transmission in in 20. So, uh, the model year changed from... Let's see, 14, 15, and then 16. So... I got some research to do, so for now, the video is on standby. So, I've called all over the place, and nobody can seem to find the right seal for this car. I'm going to wait till Monday, and I'm going to take these seals down to the freaking dealer, and, and say, what the hell's going on? What transmission did they put in my car? So... So until then, I'm like, well, screw it. Almost all my training fluids out. I'm going to pull the oil pan. I'm going to continue forward, pull the oil pan off, change this filter I got right here. Hopefully I got the right goddamn filter. So here's a new filter in the gasket. Change that. And then uh, we'll see. So I got to get my oil tank, my drain tank thing. And then... Uh, I'll pull the pan off, and then I'll show you what it looks like inside the oil pan after 8,000 miles. Okay, here we go. This is 8,000 miles on this transmission. Now, this gasket here, this is metal. You could, it sticks. It actually sticks to the, to the magnets. Look at that. Boing. So it's got a metal gasket on it, which is unusual. Considering... The one that I have here is rubbery. This is a rubber one. All right. So, let's take a look-see. Okay, so it's a dark pan. And there's some black in there. So here's the magnets. And I'm going to go grab my paper towels so you can see there. Hang on. I didn't want to dirty all my rags. 
So now this has two magnets in it. This is the fill level. When this is full is when you stop. We'll come back to that in a minute. So here's magnet number one. So there's magnet number one. And it's got a lot of shit on it. It's got quite a bit of shit on it for only 8,000 miles. This is why you want to dump your fluid quickly to get any of this shit off that I'm getting off now off of this magnet. I zoomed in close so you could see the pan. I guess I can zoom back out for a minute. You can see my little blue shoes. Got spray foam on this shoe. That's what that is right there. Spray foam. Damn shit. Okay, so there's one clean magnet. And this is what I mean about the pan gasket. I, I, I've never seen. Now check this out. There's a pan gasket, right? There's a magnet. Watch this. Look at that. It's it's a metal pan gasket. Isn't that weird? Huh. Yes. I was surprised. Okay, I'm not going to put that back in yet. Here's magnet number two. Let's just rub our finger around this and see what's on this one. This is on the very bottom. All that disgusting metal shit shavings and and everything in there that so that's not no good so i tell you if you have a spark i change the training fluid right away I'll pull this magnet off yeah the fluid came out a little dirtier than i thought on the stick it looked kind of clean but once i pulled the pan I'll show you what it looks like in the pan, man. So I'm cleaning this magnet up really nice, and I'm going to wipe the pan out with another clean rag. I can see the metal. So this is, that's nice and clean. There's my two magnets there. And I'll get in a couple of nice clean paper towels. I got to get this oil out of the middle of this pan, man. See, so that's not too bad. Um, you know, you can expect... See, eh, you can expect to see some of that, you know. I honestly... I honestly thought it was going to be worse than what I'm seeing right now. Seriously, I did. I thought for damn sure I was going to find like a lot of shavings and shit in there. But I'm not. Now we're going to use our tub of towels just to break up that greasy residue in there. And then I'll wipe it out again. But I just want it sparkly clean. Yeah, I'm surprised that the pan is actually dark. You know, it's like all the other pans when I worked at Amco Transmissions... The pans are always silver inside, and you wouldn't believe the amount of shit you would see in there. So I think this way they uh, they do it this way to hide it. So, mine's a clean bottom. Oh, the magnets are grabbing it. So yeah, a little a little clue about this transmission pan that people don't know or don't realize, is uh, they think this is a drain plug. <laughs> That's not the drain plug. You would think. Most people would think that. And they what they would do is they would, you know, they would pull the plug, and hardly any transmission fluid would come out. Maybe a few drips. And they'd be like, what the freaking hell is going on here? Well, oh, the magnets are good. If I had a couple more magnets, I'd throw them in this pan just for the hell of it. But most most tranny pans you see is one magnet. Um, but these are so destructive. That's why you got to stay up with them. All right, get out of there. We'll put this magnet back. This magnet back. Okay, so this transmission sits like this in the car, right? So your oil level is actually way up here. So to check your your flu level, am I back out? I'm back out. 
Um, you undo this plug here. Let me find a wrench here and we'll uh, show you. Let's just take a guess. That's 17? Nope, 18. Nope, not 18. How about a 19? Are we a 19 millimeter? Oh, yes, we are. Okay. I gotta knock it loose. There we go. So, this one is your dipstick. So what you do is when you're filling your transmission and you put in your three quarts and uh, or your three and whatever quarts, this tube tells you the level of your transmission fluid because this goes up inside there. So when your transmission's leaning like this, your transmission's full all the way up to here. So what you do is you undo this little plug and you leave it out until it stops dripping. Once it stops dripping, your transmission is at the perfect level. Surprise, huh? Yep. I'm going to snug it down just in case I'm, I'm stupid and I forget. I just want to snug it. Because you know, my last experience with the oil change. So, all right. This pan is like brand new. Put my gasket on there. For now... Let it lay flat a little bit if it can. Or maybe I'll put some sticky shit on it just to tack it in place. And uh, we're going to go pull the training filter off. So, transmission filter. I clamp my light in the vise here. Ugh. See, look at the fluid. Does that look crystal clear? Looks like engine oil. Look at that stuff. Oh, there's my bolt I needed. I need that bolt. Hey, bolt. I got the new filter off. You can see it's rather crappy. And uh, the screen doesn't look too bad. I kind of would like to cut this apart and look at the screen, but there's no point because when I cut it apart, it's just going to throw shards of metal and then it's going to be, you know, it isn't going to look right. So now we do reverse. And uh, I'm going to put the pan back on. That's not going to be too exciting. My hands are all oil. I don't want to touch the camera right now. And um, yeah, it looks like Kyle's going to be sitting here till Monday. But at least I got the fluid changed. I will right, have the fluid changed. This will go back on. Nice and cleany weeny. And... Uh, like that, I'll put a few bolts up through here to hold this gasket straight, but it's amazing, a metal gasket. How the hell? So that's going to be it for now. Um, this will be like a part one. Part two will be coming later. And, yeah, that's it. I just had a real bitch of a time getting that ball joint off. So, that's it for now. We'll pick this up uh, probably Monday or so when I get the right gasket. So, all right, everybody. There's the end of my Chevy Spark dilemma. This is, it just keeps going and going and going. I mean, it's just like never ending. There's always something, as you can tell. You know, the order of the seal that it calls for it comes in. It ain't the right freaking seal. It's like, come on. The only thing I got right was the oil pan gasket, you know, and... uh the filter huh 50 50 not too bad i guess so yeah i'm gonna have to find out what what year transmission that is if it is in fact an o a 14 or if it's a 16 or what the hell it is because i have no clue what it is i mean when they did this in 2020 i'm sure they didn't have like an old 14 on the shelf to throw in here i mean they could have i don't freaking know but the seal I ordered for a 14 does not fit a 14. So something's changed, and i got to figure out what's going on. So I'll go to the dealer, and they said the gas, gas is 50 bucks. And, uh, well, if they have one in stock, I'm just going to pay for it and just get out of there, and, and then I'll go back after Chevy. So, yeah, this Chevy shit isn't over. It ain't over yet. So, okay. 
I'll be back when uh, I have a seal. See you later. Well, I'm back a little early. Looks can be deceiving. It looks like I'll be using this metal gasket again. I can't freaking believe this. So, this transmission is not a 14. So something is wrong in China. So I laid the gasket on there. I was getting ready to put the pan on, and I'm lining up the bolt holes, and they're all lining up nice. You know, they're lining up all the way around the block. Perfect, perfect, perfect. What the hell happened here? What the hell happened? Everything's lines up. Look at that. What the freaking hell? There's no screw there. So, figure that out. This is for a 14. This may help me find out what year it is. So, look at that. I got to put the metal gasket back on. And hopefully I put it on the right way around. Actually, I think there's only one way it can go on, honestly. Even if I flip it over. Yeah, that only goes one way. Oh, Christ. I got to use a gasket over. I hate that shit. Well, now that tells me that's not a 14 transmission in this car. Because this everything's starting to make sense now. Because the 14 had three bolts in the corner. Or whatever year this has, two bolts in the corner. Yep. Well, all right. I got to reuse this. I could probably... Do I have any sealer shit for this? If I can put like a little tiny, just a little tiny smear coat of sealant on it. Where's that red shit? Usually I got that red shit. Oh, there it is. Gasket maker. Oh, that's hard as a rock. I think that's done making gaskets. Yeah. This is what I forgot to put on my car. Disc brake quiet. Okay, I got some here. So I got a little bit in here. I just put a very light, thin layer on. Oh, my God. All right. I found my red stuff. I put a very thin layer on this stuff because you don't want to have this shit squeezing out all over the place and get caught in your filter and plug it up. People have done that in the past. So I have a very thin layer on this, so hardly anything should squeeze out around this. So I had to poke this hole in the side of this to get the shit to come out. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Whenever you're using this stuff, it can come out, it can squeeze out the side here, but you don't want any of it squeezing out in here. You know? Because those filter screens are small. So I've already wiped all this, any residual off on the inside lip of this. Some may still squeeze out, but it ain't going to be a hell of a lot to matter any. But yeah, don't glob this shit on. It's just there to hold the gasket. All right, there's your two cents of the day. Goodbye. Well, I just verified it. I looked for 2016 um, Chevy Spark Pan Gasket. Does not have that third hole in it. So this is for a 14 and 15, 13, 14, and 15. After that, they changed it. 16 doesn't have that anymore. So that transmission in my car is a 16 or newer. That answered that just by the pan gasket. So now I'm going to look up, you know, now that's pointing me in the correct direction because I figured, you know, they're not going to put a 14 in a 14. So now I got to figure out what year that tranny is. But from what I've been seeing online is from 16 to 22, it's all the same. So, okay, I just figured I'd just throw that little info in there. And that kind of actually helped me, but determined that it is not a 14 in my car. So it does have a newer style tranny in it. Would you like to rub my chin? My big flappy bag of skin. It's looking a little chubby, just a little fluffy, because it's full of semen.